Faith provoking praise. Part one. Faith provoking praise. Faith provoking what? Praise that you need faith to make it happen. It's a word is like unto thee, O Lord. Among the gods, who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing, don't say you know it. He said, God is so holy that when you give him fearful praise, you will experience fearful wonders. Doing wonders. So praise is not just to feel good in church. If you don't understand it, is that clear, sir? It's not enough to dance. You must do it with what? Understanding. He said, if you want to see wonders, then give God what? Fearful praises. Praises that are unconventional. It will provoke the fearful hands of God. And today, not tomorrow, as you give God praise, I decree fearful things will happen in your life. Amen. Praise can level any mountain before you. Whatever the presents and obstacles before you will be leveled today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our key scripture is taken from 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And I'll read from verse 1. Open to that Second Chronicles 20. Because if you don't know the story, you can't get the glory. Don't say, hey, I'm going to dance. Dancing without understanding is entertainment. Did you hear what I said? In case you are dancing, people have been dancing since. If you want to see dancing, you better go to a place where they blow trumpet. You see people dance. So it's not the dancing. He said, praise you with understanding. Psalm 47, 6 and 7. He said, praise you with what? Understanding. So it's not enough to say, sing praises unto God. Sing praises unto God. The king sing praises. He said, for God is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praises with what? He said, not say just praise. He said, praise with understanding. It's not just we are dancing today. Today we are going to dance. No. He said, do it with understanding. I'm going to dissect 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Take every scripture. You'll be putting the scripture that consigns you before you, and then when you're praising, you'll say, this is the area I want my own. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Now, look at verse 1. Each verse represents something. So I'm going to take time to break them down. And it came to pass after this also, that the children of Moab, and children of Ammon, and with them, other beside the Ammonites, came against Jehoshaphat to what? Battle. Nations came together <laughs> against one state in Israel. Just imagine three nations against a state in a country. <laughs> Is that funny? Not nations against nation, no. Three nations against one state. Where will you start from? That was what happened here. Anytime you come to a situation like that, you know, in mathematics, just look at the example and solve your problem. Through? Look at verse 12. Oh, our God, will thou not judge them? For we have no mind against this great company. It was a great company that committed against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are what? Have you not come to a point where you come to a wish end? Challenges get to a point, you just get confused. Has it happened to you before? If you come to that point, Switch over to praise. Many pray, but many don't praise. You can pray and miss. You don't need scripture to praise. You don't need to quote scripture. Just praise right with a pure heart. I hear now. But you know, prayer, you must quote scripture. Except it's all those deliverance prayers. You, don't, you give 50 prayer points, no scripture. Those ones are just religious prayers. But if you want your prayer to be answered, you must pray, quote scripture. But in praise, just Praise God with a pure heart. God will answer. You don't praise and miss, but you can pray and miss. Is that true? You don't say it is written in praise. <laughs> do you say it's written? No. You just know what to do and get your results. Shout hallelujah. Yeah, people don't value praise. It's one of the most potent instruments in spiritual warfare. 
But because it's so simple, and you know, this part of the world, we don't like simple things. We like things that is very tough. Somebody walked into my office long ago. He says, sir, in this church, we need to pray. If you see prayer, so I come down. I know that the man is serious. I said, what kind of prayer? He said, if you see prayer, we could jump like this, jump like this. I said, that prayer. I said, I know you that you don't know one scripture. I said, okay, why you pray? Which scripture did you quote? He said, but with a jump. With a jump. With a sweat like this. I said, sweat does not mean that life will be sweet. So I don't do that in Africa. Do you know Africa in particular? They like anything that is hard. If you bring Pandadian from machine, they say it's not sweet. But you know that one that you are sweating in the, the, the boom, boom. They say that is the real Pandadian. They say the one from machine. It's not, it's not sweet. We like suffering. We like what? So even, even in church, if you do something simple, no, no, it's too simple. If you fast, close door, naked, now you go prayer. Do you know the today some people believe that if you cook with stove, the soup will not be sweet. <laughs> they said, I'll soup with firewood. <laughs> you know what? You <laughs> did you what I said, that is the one that is very sweet. That one with the village, they put fire, put fire, put fire. It's the heat. The principle is heat. The principle is what? <laughs> so even in church, when is, is it only this small thing that God will do something? No. Papa said, I thought that when he said God will do wonders, he will do mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So pray. My friend, this is a simple thing. This one will bring an answer. It will bring an answer to you today. Yeah. It's a when we don't know what else to do. Have you come to a point where on a crossroad? There's one thing to do. And as you do it today, God will answer you. Yeah. Shout aloud, amen. amen. Shout a believing amen. amen. If you don't know what else to do, switch over to praise. Look at verse 15. And he said, How can ye all Judah, all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Joseph, and that king Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor dismayed, by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tell your neighbor, have no fear. Have no fear. God will take over. Will Say to yourself, I have no fear. Have no fear. God, will God will take over. Say it one more time. Have no fear. In verse 17, he said, you shall not need to fight in this battle. There are battles you don't fight. You give over to God. You hand it over to who? It says, set yourselves. Stand here still and see the salvation of God with you. How many want to see God fight for them? How many want to see God fight for them? Say, God will take over my battles. Say like a child of God. Today, Today, not tomorrow. It's a fear, no, no, be respect. Don't have any fear. Don't shake. There are certain things that will come to you. Believe you me, as human, you may want to shake. But in that situation, allow God to take over. Say here. Yes. Now, verse 20, he said, Believe the Lord your God shall be established. Believe his promise shall you what? Prosper. So believe what I'm telling you because I'm a prophet of God. Is that true? Now, verse 22. And when they began to sing, so nothing happened until they began. And to praise, the Lord set ambushment against the children of Ammon. These were the three nations that came against Judah. Which were come against Judah. And they were what? Today, not tomorrow. Every garden against us will be smitten right now. Amen. They will go down right now. If you believe it, say amen like a believer. Amen. So you will program yourself in such a way that you say, any negative word, gathering against me must crumble when? Now. When? Now. When? Now. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Messiah, verse 23, utterly to slay and to destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Messiah, everyone helped to do what? Have you seen where people find themselves? It has happened in this church before. In case you are thinking of the Holy Bible. A time came, there was a fierce battle against this church. Very fierce. The then governor said we should, they should bring down this building. Gave an order that this building we are preaching from now should be brought down. And held an executive council meeting. They held meeting on my behalf and this church for two days. Members of the church were in the meeting were shaking. They were shaking. They said, sir, you had the discussion for our executive meeting for two days. I smiled. 
He said, sir, what do we do? And I said, shut up. He said, sir, they, they meant it to, you are the topic for two days, only you, for a whole executive meeting. So development of the state, I was a topic. So the, the people who were inside the cabinet were so, sh they were so afraid. So what I did, I called some of my few associates and we went into praise. Heavy with praise. Then I got to midnight and I praised God. Church did not know. And I cheated it, praise God, with a Thursday service and I, and I concluded with quoting the scripture without their knowing. You don't tell everybody everything in your heart. So I said, let's praise God against our enemies. Inside me, I said, listen. As we finished praising God Thursday by Friday, Padagot had the biggest gunshot since this of Padagot. He said, each one helped to destroy what? These militants from what aside started shooting. Boom. Boom. And they were heading towards government house. Boom. So the governor left us and faced them now. He was... He was busy facing his life. Facing the what? They, were, they, were, they said they would go to come house. When the gun shot, they had a boom. Police, everybody ran away. They were heading. It's a spiritual thing. So at that time, he was more interested in saving his head than we. So he left us alone. That was how the battle was won. The enemies fought. We were just watching. So every time battle was ended, fight was between them and them. All your enemies will fight themselves. <laughs> All our enemies will fight themselves. When somebody is planning Camp A, and that's coming from Camp B, Camp A will fight Camp B. You will just be watching, and so shall it be in the name of Jesus. <laughs> How many believe that God's word will happen? It will replicate itself in someone's life who says, Amen. <laughs> and verse 24. And when Judah came towards the world tower in the wilderness, they looked upon the, unto the multitude. And behold, there were dead bodies falling to the earth, and none escaped. Lift your right hand and say, none of my enemies will escape. Oh, say it like a child of God. Oh, say it with faith. Oh, As I praise God today, I praise God, God will fight my battles, fight my and all my enemies, oh, my not one will escape. Oh, my In the name of Jesus. Now, every time God destroys enemies, as a Bible student, I've noticed that something happens. When he destroys enemies, he hands over the world to his children. When he destroyed Pharaoh, he gave the world to Israel. Can I tell you, when Jesus flogged the men out of the temple, check your Bible, the money was not thrown out. Read your Bible very well. He flogged them out of the temple, but the money was left in the temple. He didn't carry the money and threw them out. The Bible says he flogged their doves, everything out. So every time God fights the enemies, the world, he leaves it for his children. Today, as your enemies go down, their world will be left in your hands. Amen. Where am I coming from? Look at verse 25. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance, both what? With the dead bodies. And the pressure dwells which they stripped off of themselves more than they could carry away. And they were three days in carrying of the spoil. It was so much. After this victory, the blessing you will get, three years will be small. Yeah. You and I will not recover gathering such in the name of Jesus. Yeah. The louder your amen, you have a testimony. Yeah. And verse 29. And the fear of the Lord was on all the kingdoms of those countries, when they had heard that the Lord fought against the enemies of who? Israel. So the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet and his God gave him rest round about. If you agree, this church has ended to a scene of rest. True? A time comes where you fight and a time comes you don't fight again. In fact, we don't fight anymore. We have fought battles here. Now we are in our rest. We are not fighting anymore. We have entered our what? Before. If our neighbors will gather, this one will gather. Now, you and I will enter into a scene of rest. Amen. Shout aloud, amen. amen. Shout aloud, amen. amen. Shout aloud, amen. amen. Have you come to your wit's end? And consciously create a platform for God to take over. Because you do what? And when God takes over, you enter into your rest. Be assured, 
God never loses any battle. Never. God never loses what? He said, behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? So there's no battle that my God cannot handle. Say it one more time. And today, he will handle my battles. Say it one more time. Say it like a child of God. You know, praise is a spiritual medium with which we hand over our battles to God. God will terminate every form of shame, reproach, and struggles in your life in the name of Jesus. But I want you to note these points before you praise. Because praising God without having a picture from scriptures, you have nothing to feature. In God will I praise his word. Psalm 56, verse 4 and verse 10. This is what the Bible said. In God will I praise what? His word. In God I put my trust. I'm not a trust in God. I will not fear what flesh can do. Unto. Based on the word of God, I'm not afraid. That's what the Bible is saying. In God will I praise his word. In the Lord will I praise his word. Now, I want you to look at these six things which I've said already and then look at the area that concerns you and then praise God based on that area. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So you don't just dance. Some of you will need the six. Based on that scripture. Some of you will need two. Some may need one. Some may need all. Some may need five. It depends on what you want. You praise God based on it. Now, there are points to note before you praise. Things to expect as you want. Praise. Now, if you look at verse 12, we said... They said they don't have mind of what? Their own. So have you come to a point where you don't know what else to do? So number one, if you are at the point where you don't know what else to do, then say, Lord, at this point of my life, I praise you. Step in, because I don't know what else to do. He said, verse 2, I bring it back for, for better understanding of the people. Each one I quote, for our God, we dare not join them, for we have no mind against this great company that come against us. Neither know we what. When you don't know what else to do, there's one more thing to do. Is to do what? How many don't know what else to do? You don't know what else. You have come to a point where you are, you are tired. Has it happened to you before? If it has not happened to you, you are deceiving yourself. Have you not? I, I have prayed, fasted, done some things. I, I just, I got that. Have you not come to that point in your life before? Okay, if you say you have not come, you are lying. That situation like this, you just get tired. You fasted. You prayed. You so. <laughs> you just get tired. At that point, this is what one more thing to do. What is it? So number one, in case you are at that point, when you are dancing, say, this situation, I have reached my wit's end. Step in. Number two, verse 15. I'm taking the recap. And he said, How can ye all Judah? When God says, And he in the place of Jerusalem, and King Joshua, Thus saith the Lord unto you, he's speaking to you. This is a thus said, Thus saith, he's saying, Be not afraid. So, anything that is trying to make you to be afraid, he said, No way. I refuse to shake. I hand over to you. Some of you, you are afraid now of your landlord notice to quit. True? So as you are in this church now, you are afraid. He said, God, hey, where are we going to in Nigeria? True? And over to God. So, so that some of you are afraid. You are afraid. If, I, if it's possible today to give you a ticket, you run away. Am I talking? Yes. yes. Don't tell them you are, you are not afraid. Some of you are afraid. He said, God, hey, where are we going in this country? That kind of situation, hand over to God. Hand over to God. Be not afraid. In case you are about to be, you know, are you, one man said, I'm afeared. In case you are feared. In case you are what? In case you are feared. Hand over to God. He said, I'm afeared. So in case you are afeared, hand over to God. Don't speak that kind of English, please. In case you are afraid. In case you are what? Hand over to God. Then, number three, verse 17. You don't need to fight in this battle. Set yourself. How do you set yourself? In praise. In what? 
Stand and see. Every time you see the salvation of the Lord, he said it in Exodus 14, when Moses said, you shall see the salvation of the Lord. Every time God says salvation of the Lord, watch, enemies not want to use to escape. All Pharaoh and his hosts drowned in the rest. Today, your enemies will drown. Yeah. Hand over. Say, so hand, hand over. Say it one more time. Say it like a child of God. So number three, hand over your battles to God. Hand over your battles to who? Number 22, 24. And when they began to praise and to sing, the Lord said ambushment against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mansi, and which were come against Judah, and they were what? Smitten. They were what? They were smitten. That means God destroyed them. For the children of Ammon, now, nah, so, expect victory. Expect what? In expectation of victory, this is how you want to expect. Expect all your enemies not to want to escape. Listen, you know, A, no one of your enemies was what? Escape. Two, they should fight themselves. Three, listen, bring it back so you understand. That's still on that number four. When you expect a victory, A, Expect that the victory will be not partial victory. You know, victory has partial victory where you fight some enemies are still remaining. No. Total what? We are not one way. Not that one person will escape to come and fight you back. And when they began to sing and to sing praises, the Lord said, I'm pushing against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mansi, and which were come against Judah. And they were what? Smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of the sand, all tally to what? Slay and to destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of the sand, everyone helped to do what? They'll be fighting each other. If a body man is pursuing you, and the other one, Bene Krukru man is somewhere, Bene Krukru will fight uh, Ogboni, Ogboni will fight Bene Krukru. You want to know what's Bene Krukru? Find out. If an occultic man is Camp A, and an occultic man is Camp B, they are planning to fight you, the two of them will be fighting and leave you alone. Are you getting what I'm saying? So I expect victory. And I, none of my enemies will what? Escape. Where is expect victory? In that victory, you have a target. Say, Lord, none of my enemies will escape. Give me victory while they fight themselves. And I'll just be watching you give me victory. So I hear. And then number five, supernatural abundance. Supernatural what? Based on verse 25. Supernatural abundance. I mean like abundance. Where enemies will all run away and they say, come and buy my house. EFCC is pursuing them. Then they just sell their house. House of 100 million. They say, boy, bring me 2 million, 2 million, 2 million, 2 million, 2 million. Before EFCC go kill me, give me 2 million. That's what the Bible is saying. You don't know? EFCC will pursue most of them here. Most of them want today. Sunday will pursue them. They will run away. Sunday will pursue most of them and run away. They will leave everything and run away. And you buy those houses at Peanut. To save their heads. Or one sickness will hold them and they say, please, anything like bring. And then finally, he gave them rest round about. Number six, you enter to a season of rest. How many want it? So which one do you want? You know the one you want. Do you know the one you want? You want all. Now if you just say all, you, are not, you must have a target. You must have the picture of what you... It's not the dancing that brings the miracle. Please listen. It is having picture of what you want. When I wanted victory, I had a picture. I said, Lord, this battle is fierce. Fight this man and his group that want to bring down this church. I targeted the man. I pictured him and I began to praise. And then God, we praise God towards the Friday shooting start. Saturday, midnight. How many of you were in Panago then? Boom! Doom! Doom! Boom! Doom! Doom! Governor left us alone. Face the boys. We will, we will are at peace. Rise to your feet. How many are ready for serious business? Are you ready for serious business? You are going, you are going to focus on the one you, you want. We are going to give 10 minutes. We are going to praise God for 10 minutes. How many minutes? Serious 10 minutes praise. All churches that have instruments, play your own instruments. In case you don't have instruments, you hook up to the headquarters. But if you have, play your instruments. In case you don't play well, you just be singing your own. Because sometimes some people in some churches will just forget that it's praise. They think it's entertainment. Praise is different from entertainment. Praise is different from 
we are still blessed. Don't mind your neighbor. Shift. Expect your own miracle as we praise God now.
about two minutes. Or less than that. Look at the points. Begin to declare those points for the church. Declare them for God, someone in his family. And then declare them for you. Are you upset now? Look at the area. And people say, these things will begin to happen in my life. Go ahead in the name of Jesus. Give voice to the word. Prophesy it over your life. Open your mouth and declare. And talk to God. Give us victory. In Jesus' mighty name. Whatever you have declared in line with what you have heard will become a reality in your life. Amen. What you have prophesied, you will live to say it. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. How many know that God has given them victory? Tell him thank you. In Jesus' name. Now the prophetic with David Ibiomi. Jesus God, mighty name. How many know rest. that God has given them victory? From today, enter to your Tell him thank you. In Jesus' name. Now the prophetic with David Ibiomi. Just like this ministry is in our season of rest. This week. From today, enter to your season of rest. You have praised God, you have Jesus. danced, you have turned everything you praise God for. Each and every one of them will manifest in our lives. This week, I decree to be a week where God himself will be ahead of us. 